Janine and welcome back to my channel and hello from Norway. I'm currently in Norway as we speak and as you're watching this video, which is so exciting. I have currently been traveling the whole Scandinavia. I've been in Finland, Sweden, Denmark, and my last final stop is Norway. It has been an amazing trip. I vlogged all about it. It's on my vlog channel, Janine TV, which I've been daily uploading. So check it out. It'll be linked down below for you guys. But today's video, since I am traveling abroad, I thought what better video to do than all my ultimate travel life hacks and tips for you guys. I have a list of like 20 things, 20 tips and life hacks that will really help you guys out when you're traveling abroad or even domestic, doesn't matter. But these are my best 20 tips for you guys. Hopefully you find them helpful. If you do, give me a big thumbs up and let's just get right into this video. And also, do not mind my hands in this video. They have seen better days. I know that. So my first tip is always check in for your flight 24 hours beforehand. I know this is typically what you're supposed to do, but if you do this, you're normally able to get you know some sort of upgrade or you're able to change your seat. And if they automatically select a seat for you, like say you got a middle seat in the back row and you don't want that, always check in 24 hours because that way you can adjust your seat and you can probably get a free upgrade. So always, always do this. My next tip is if you are at the gate and you're about to board and you don't have a desired seat that you really want, or if you want to check your bag and you don't really want to be lugging it around, what you can do is at the gate, you can ask them if there's any available seats that are left over that are like not in the middle or in the back because normally what they do is they will reserve a couple seats for like people who want to upgrade or the people who are supposed to check in for their flight and who never did and they'll release them about 15 minutes before the flight and then they'll just like give them free reign for anybody who wants them. So if you want to upgrade or switch your seats, you can always ask the flight attendant or whoever's working at the gate if you can switch. Most of the time you can if there's seats available. Also if you're carrying a carry-on suitcase and you just don't want to carry it with you or you don't want to be lugging it around if you just prefer to check it, they will always check it for free at the gate. You don't want to pay to check a suitcase. This is the place to do it because just go ask them if they can check it in for you and they will and they will do it free of charge. So that's just a little tip and trick for you guys. My next tip is crucial. It is Expedia and Ebates and taking advantage of both of those. Now this is not sponsored or anything, but Expedia and Ebates are both online services. So Expedia is a website where you can book hotels, rental cars, and your plane tickets through this website. And Ebates is a website where you can get cash back by shopping online. Ebates works in um, conjunction with Expedia. You can get 10% cash back when you purchase a flight or something through Ebates on Expedia. If you have the Ebates little um, online extension, it's a web extension, when you go to Expedia, it'll pop up and say activate 10% cash back. You push that button, and when you make a purchase, you will get 10% cash back. And it comes in like a month or two or so, but it is seriously such a great little handy tool. And you get basically your money back, which is so nice. So definitely take advantage of both of these together. When you're traveling, always compare Uber versus Lyft because each one has different rates. So Lyft may be cheaper or Uber may be cheaper. So don't just settle for one. Definitely have both apps because they do have different rates. And one may have a price surge at one time when the other one may not. So always check both of these before, before getting a ride. If you're traveling abroad, always take a picture of your passport or print out a physical copy because you never know what could happen. You could lose it, someone could steal it, you never know. So always print out a little extra copy or at least have some sort of like picture of it on your phone because you just never know. When you're traveling, always let your bank know that you're traveling abroad. So I'm signed up with Wells Fargo, so I'm always able to let them know that I'm traveling abroad. And you can pick which credit card you're bringing with you. This way, if you travel abroad and you don't let them know, then they might think that someone stole your credit card and flew off to a different country and is trying to charge you. So always let your bank know by calling them or doing it online. So I definitely let my bank know that I was traveling abroad. I let them know which cards I was bringing. That way they don't cancel your card when you're abroad because that would be so bad if they did. Whenever you're traveling abroad as well, only take out max $100 first in each country because you don't want to be carrying around a bunch of cash because the chances of being robbed or something like that are a little bit higher when you're traveling abroad if you're a tourist because they know you're a tourist and they're going to target you a little bit more. So don't take out too much cash initially. And another tip is don't take it out at the airport. The airport has higher conversion rates. They're going to be charging you a little bit extra, so don't take it out there. Always take it out in like an ATM or some other place when you're in the actual country, but never at the airport because the airport likes to take advantage of tourists and people traveling and they like to charge higher. So never do that. If you guys want to know what to wear, what you should bring on your carry-on and all my travel essentials, I have a whole video of how I pack, how I pack efficiently, what outfits I wear, what I bring on my carry-on. I'll have that link down below for you. That video was so requested and I finally did it and I did pretty well so I definitely think it could be beneficial for you guys so that'll be linked down below for you guys as well. 
My next tip is always bring an extra outfit on your carry-on. I have learned this the hard way so many times. I've lost my suitcase about two or three times now, and I showed up to a place with no toothbrush, no makeup, nothing. So from here on now, I'm always bringing an extra pair of like underwear, pants, like a full-on outfit, bringing my makeup with me, some small toiletries, like always pack that with you in case something happens to your suitcase because unfortunately it happens to the best of us. Okay, so to avoid your suitcase getting lost or something if you're going to be traveling abroad, this is what I did, which has been really difficult, honestly, trying to fit it all in my suitcase, but if you're going to be traveling abroad and you're afraid of your suitcase getting lost, what you need to do is you need to be avoiding as many layovers as possible and also short layover times. So if you're going to be traveling abroad, try to pick a flight that has the least layovers and a little bit longer of a layover time because if your layover, Sorry, it's so loud outside. If your layover is too short, then they might have a hard time transferring your suitcase from one flight to the next, which results in your suitcase getting lost or stuck in another country. The least layovers and the least amount of times they're transferring your suitcase, the better. If they keep transferring it four to five times or whatever, it increases the chances of your suitcase being lost. So that's just another little tip for you if you're going to be traveling abroad. If you're going to be traveling abroad and you're traveling somewhere that has a really big time difference than where you currently live, like I am right now, like I said, I'm in Norway. California is 10 hours back. It's a really significant time difference. So these two things are going to be your best friend when you travel abroad. So this is called Jet Zone. This prevents jet lag and the effects of jet lag, like feeling groggy, tired, and all that. You take it like consecutively for the next two hours before you land to the next place so you don't feel the effects of jet lag. And then this is melatonin. Melatonin helps you sleep. So when you're supposed to be sleeping and your body can't, just pop one of these and you will be able to go to sleep a lot better. These have been so helpful for me traveling abroad. So I definitely recommend you guys to purchase these if you're going to be traveling abroad. You can get both of these at Whole Foods. Okay, so if you're a Spotify user like I am, then you know that your music is it's streaming, so you can't use it when you're on the plane. So what I do is I make like five or six playlists all go offline. That way I can listen to them at any time. Doesn't require internet. So if you're gonna be traveling abroad or just even anywhere, Always make your playlist offline, that way you can still listen to your music when you're on the plane because there's nothing worse than not having music on a plane or like a long flight. So always make sure you do this, make sure you have some playlists that are offline so you can have your jams still when you're traveling. If you're going to be traveling abroad, like when I went to Paris and even here, everyone recommended me to get an over the shoulder zipped up bag. So let me show you my purse really quickly. So this is my bag, this is a Marc Jacobs bag and this is a zipped up over the shoulder bag. So if you're gonna be traveling abroad, um, like I said kind of earlier, tourists are usually targets for theft and stuff like that and pickpocketers. So when I was in Paris, everyone warned me so much about pickpocketers there. So always have a bag that's over your shoulder so someone can't just rip it off your shoulder and run away with your bag and have it always zipped up so they can't just stick their hand in there. Like you don't ever want like an open, like a bag that you can just easily open or whatever. So always have it zipped up over your shoulder. That way it lowers the chances of you being pickpocketed. So highly recommend you guys do that. So if you don't currently have TSA pre-check or global entry, what I recommend you guys to do is 100% get global entry. Global entry includes TSA pre-check and it's only $15 more. It just makes a lot more sense to get that than TSA pre-check. Unfortunately, I was a dumb, dumb head and I got TSA pre-check and then I noticed later that global entry included TSA pre-check and is only $15 more and I was like, why did I not do that? Before you look into getting TSA pre-check, I just recommend you guys do global entry because it covers everything for the next five years. So definitely take advantage of that. Okay, so if you're not gonna be getting an international plan or something like that and you are just gonna go, you're just gonna go to a country and you're not gonna be using internet on your phone, but you need a way to get around, what you should do is before you leave is download the region or the country country's map offline. So when I went to Greece, I wasn't exactly sure what my service was gonna look like. So what I did was I downloaded each island's map before I went. That way I could still know where I was going, I could still get directions, but I could get it offline. So definitely do that, but it does take some space off your phone, just FYI. But I highly recommend you guys do that because that way you never have to worry about getting lost. I came to Norway with only a carry-on suitcase, like I said earlier, which has been such a struggle trying to fit my stuff in my suitcase. This has been a freaking lifesaver, game changer. Thanks to my roommate Morgan over here, she's sitting over here in the little corner. She basically taught me to suction all my clothes with bags. Well, there are things you can purchase off Amazon, like things that specifically do this, they suction up the air for you. But if you want a cheaper alternative and something that's a little bit, you know, less, takes, I guess, a little bit less space, then what you need are just some plastic bags. I literally took these from my hotel, and you're just gonna suction all the air out of your bag and then tie it up really well and just stick it in your suitcase. It's gonna save you so much room. This has been a game changer for me here in Norway and in Scandinavia, so 
definitely recommend you guys do that. My next tip is to try and travel on Wednesdays. Wednesdays are a low travel day majority of the time, so flights are a lot cheaper then. So when I'm going to Dallas next on the 21st, I'm flying in on a Wednesday and I'm leaving on a Wednesday because that's when the flights are the cheapest. So always try and book a flight on Wednesday if you can because that is when your flights are going to be the cheapest. My next tip is for you hungry people out there, which is always me. What you can do is pack oatmeal. So basically I purchased some Quaker Oats packets and I stuffed like four or five of these in my backpack. And all you really need is just some hot water. So if you're gonna be traveling and you're hungry and you want something to eat and you don't wanna be spending money, just ask a restaurant for like a cup of hot water pour your little oatmeal packet in it, and boom, you have an instant meal. I did this in Finland, and every morning when I woke up, I just had a, a great, delicious breakfast. It was free, basically. So definitely do this, this will save you money, and almost everywhere is gonna offer you hot water, basically. So definitely, definitely do this. Another tip is for you ladies, or whoever is using hair tools, if you're gonna be bringing a hair tool, then you will need something like this if you're gonna be traveling abroad. You want a specific converter for heating tools. I learned this the hard way. I was in London, I stuck my straightener in the outlet, and what happened? <laughs> Lost my straightener, it was just fried, it was done ski. I literally just threw it away and it was an expensive straightener. Learn from my mistake and get one that is specifically for heating tools. It has like a cool little setting on the top that says low is for shavers, medium is for hair straighteners, stylers, and then a high is for, for hair dryers. So definitely recommend you guys get one of these. It is so loud outside, my goodness. Okay, sorry. So you can get this at Target. Really recommend you guys do this if you're going to be traveling abroad. Internet tethering. If your phone or your service provider allows you to get internet tethering, I highly recommend it. This has saved my life, especially being a YouTuber. This has helped me so much traveling abroad because a lot of the times countries or places don't have Wi-Fi. They charge you for Wi-Fi, services spotty or whatever. So basically, um, I'm able to get internet on my computer working off of my phone's provider. So you basically make your phone into a little hotspot and you're, I'm, I'm able to upload my videos, work off my computer, and be anywhere. I can be in a car, I can be in the airport, anywhere I want that has basically service on my phone. It is a little bit extra, but if you don't wanna worry about Wi-Fi being in places, then I really, really recommend you guys to try this. It is extra, like I said, but I do think it is so worth it. Okay guys, this is the last and final tip. The settings might have changed a bit on my camera because I forgot about this tip and I was like, wait, hold up. They need to know about this tip. So I reset my camera back up. Basically, what you guys should be doing and what you can do if you're not in a rush to get somewhere abroad is you can take advantage of a very long layover and you can make it into basically a second vacation spot. For example, on my way to Greece, I had a very long layover in London and I purposely did that. That way, I could see London on my way to Greece. So I had a friend who lived in London. I stayed with her one night. I got to explore London a bit. It wasn't a very long trip, but I still did get to say I went to London, I got the stamp, and I got to explore the city. And then I went off to Greece. So if you can do that, I definitely recommend it. It's a really cool way to kind of get two vacations out of one. It's a cool little fun life hack for you guys. So those are all my life hacks in this video. I hope you guys found it extremely helpful and beneficial. If you did, give me a big thumbs up and let me know down below what was your most favorite life hack that you found useful and where do you want to travel to next? Thank you so much for watching today's video. If you guys want to see my vlog channel where I was daily vlogging in the Scandinavia and wait, yeah, I know. Morgan's giving me a look of disappointment because I keep messing that up. <laughs> <laughs> If you guys want to see all my travel vlogs of me traveling to Scandinavia and Finland, then that'll be all linked down below for you guys. And my Instagram has kind of been popping a little bit here. So if you want to check that out too, it's right here. It's Gina and Polo. Give me a follow. Thank you so much for watching today's video. And I will see you guys next Saturday back in LA. Peace out, Girl Scout. Bye.